I myself Uday, I have around 12 years experience uh, in uh, software development uh, and I started my career as a developer. Uh, then uh, I slowly uh, moved to different roles uh, like a tech lead, team lead, a project lead and project manager. Now I am working for uh, AdTech uh, and we are into LM and uh, DevOps uh, consulting. So, so uh, next uh, 45 minutes or one hour I will take you guys uh, through this uh, uh, webinar for uh, uh, what is DevOps Primer. So to get started basically what is DevOps? So I started this research around uh, six to eight months back in terms of like uh, uh, to understand okay what is DevOps then I read a lot of articles uh, and a lot of other materials, some books. Uh, then I actually figured out that uh, there is too much confusion and there is no standardization across this and uh, these kind of whatever the buzzwords I captured which are associated with uh, uh, DevOps. So these many different things people are saying that okay this is what is DevOps is and it has a lot of stuff. So we actually then thought that okay there is a need to standardize this before we get into uh, any kind of stuff such that uh, people or whoever we are dealing with are on same page. So we wanted to do that with the ground level and uh, uh, with the concepts and associating those concepts to the terminology such that everyone is on the same page. So about AdTech, uh, like I said, uh, we are a DevOps and uh, ALM consulting company and uh, we are SDLC process experts, uh, automation experts and system integrators and configuration management experts. Uh, we are Atlassian partners, uh, we are platinum partners for Atlassian and uh, we are Jenkins partner. So you can see basically what we do. Uh, we try to understand your process and uh, uh, to boost like compliance, collaboration, integration, visibility and traceability in your organization. Uh, we try to come up with the solutions which will work for your organization in terms of like ALM or the DevOps engineering uh, in these knowledge areas. Okay, You can see the set of tools here is on top of, of uh, Atlassian tools and apart from Jenkins, rest all is like Atlassian platform. These tools are the other technologies which we will use in terms of providing the right solutions for the customers. So the agenda will be like, uh, first we will be covering in terms of like uh, uh, why the DevOps rather than getting into what is DevOps. Uh, uh, then we will cover multiple perspectives on the DevOps, then what is DevOps technology, uh, what we think at AdTech uh, is the DevOps technologies and uh, how do we adopt DevOps. Uh, uh. So the high level business goal, it's a, a net profit, uh, ROI and cash flow which in turn uh, down, boils down to the quality and time to market and reduce cost. Uh, so the fundamentally the bottleneck uh, is there is a lot of interruptions in terms of the flow right from the customer is requesting something to when it gets delivered. So if you compare uh, the automation aspects in the manufacturing industry where everything is so smooth, uh, so just in time, uh, like uh, you don't keep much in inventory and the interruption of your complete manufacturing process is uh, as smooth as possible. So what can we do? As software in software organizations in order to ensure that the information or whatever the delivery we do is as smooth as like a car in an automation factory the way it comes out. So let's begin with uh, uh, products and uh, projects. Okay, The fundamental uh, beginning of anything is uh, products. Either there are different uh, ways a product can be kicked off, like it could come from idea, study or competition, customers feedback or other business factors. So once there is a business plan and it is approved in a portfolio engagement that okay uh, we will do this, then the real project will get kicked off. Okay, either you call that as a project or a release cycle. So which will have its own shape initially it will be like um, 
uh, in a typical waterfall environment or uh, the standard process, uh, the clarity will not be there. Gradually, you will get the clarity by the end of your product uh, release or a version of the product release. So once the product is released, you will have a lot of operations uh, uh, which the operations team will be taking care and based on the product feedback and based on your competitors what they are doing, you will be or the organizations will be coming up with the other projects for the same product to in order to ensure that there are parallel releases okay, to satisfy the customer needs. So what how does this product uh, gets delivered so we captured the major functions uh, uh, right from the left you see the customers and markets uh, where the product management team will do a study in terms of like what is that market or the customer is expecting further and then they would work with executives once the business plan is kicked off then and they would work with engineering and once the product is built uh, then they will work with sales and marketing to get the product released and at the same time they will work with the service team such that once there is an order they know how to fulfill that order. So why do these functions are critical? So every function has its own knowledge area and one individual or one kind of team will not be able to perform all these kind of tasks across uh, uh, different functions. So at the end of the day you need uh, uh, different functions uh, which are triggering the silos and these silos are uh, the main problem and the DevOps main agenda is to break these silos. So this is another view of like uh, in place of products uh, if you replace with uh, uh, an implementation or IT service organizations, uh, how does they see? So you see it, there is no markets or customers, it's more of users uh, and uh, again there will be an IT management team once they outsource the project to the engineering of uh, other organization and there will be an IT operations team which will be carrying out and again the similarity between the product or the IT organizations is like uh, the engineering function whatever they do more or less will be same. So we captured then in terms of engineering the software development uh, what are all the major things they will do. So you can see the different things what they will be do uh, what they will be doing and uh, again all these things uh, are because of the so specialized skill it actually will call for a sub function inside the engineering function which in turn will actually create the silos. There is a lot of uh, environmental factors uh, the uh, like for the products uh, so customers are expecting a lot of frequent releases and uh, there are multiple platforms to be supported so like operating systems and uh, even now the devices are changing and there are multiple browsers so nowadays everything is uh, SaaS based solutions or web.2.0 compliant products so these browsers play a lot of role and there are a lot of uh, legacy products and people or companies are struggling to cope, cope up with the need of these changes or how basically porting these products to these needs and large and uh, complex cross-functional product teams because of the separate knowledge areas these are very evident that they need to have it and which actually calls for a matrix organizations and the other factor is geographically distributed teams so that itself will call for another silo and the development team is more because of the agile uh, or the scrum or these kind of methodologies or agile principles uh, they started becoming more agile and but uh, rest of the organizations are not still agile and uh, here their main objective is becoming agility whereas operations team in order to have the stability 
so they would not be ready to accept these kind of new uh, or frequent releases so how do we solve that puzzle is the question so we will take you through the technology factors before that what are all the other devops triggers so the major triggers you can see here that uh, okay it, it uh, increase the output and uh, reduce the delivery risk and uh, improve the customer satisfaction and uh, quick turnaround so now that we established the uh, why the devops is needed and uh, what is this devops and what are the multiple perspectives the major perspectives okay. so one of the uh, big factor or people are saying devops is all about enterprise agility so how does the software development evolutionary path has actually taken place so before 20 years back if you see everything is waterfall so the problem is like okay you will have to move in phased manner and the amount by the time you get feedback it's much much longer time so in order to correct yourself it used to take a lot more time so then people started realizing okay we need to be iterative and then they started making things smaller in size but at the end of the day even it actually again is a, it's as good as like waterfall but the work what you do is reduced in an iterative cycle then the agile principles started triggering different methodologies like scrum kanban or other different methodologies which started populating or the like uh, moving the uh, uh, software development teams uh, what they could actually deliver out of their team but at the end of the day they were more agile but if you see the block uh, what it gets uh, reviewed or deployed to production still more or less same to the iterative model so then there is a need for the enterprise agility and during the same time the continuous integration continuous development or continuous deployment and uh, lean methodologies everything started coming in so that's when it, it, it's more is more of a time which is of enterprise agility and uh, so in enterprise agility the crux is how can you keep uh, your uh, work in progress or inventory as low as possible okay and it does not mean that there is a single solution for the organizations to strike the work in progress or the inventory if you take a mobile app uh, probably you can release every day even if you want uh, the releases in a shorter cycle yes you can release it in a shorter cycle i have read in some uh, harvard review that uh, amazon releases every 11 seconds to their production system okay but yeah on the other side if you see uh, like some spaceships or anything they cannot have or afford to have that kind of releases every day so they cannot limit this work in progress or inventory to the same way like amazon or uh, a mobile app can afford to do so they need to strike the balance probably by keeping some factors like uh, what is the cost of the failure in our product or in our okay in mobile app the cost of failure is not very much so even if you like uh, fail okay you will have one more opportunity to do another release probably in another 2 hours or whatever it could be the frequency but whereas something like a satellite or space series if uh, once you actually release something or you try to launch something and it fails yeah it will have much more longer cycles to get back to the same place so that is one of the crucial factor and the second factor could be like uh, keeping the inventory in your place like how much market you are losing outside so the opportunity lost cost because you are not releasing it so these are the two major factors which i see and the rest of others organizations can work it out themselves uh, the idea is to strike this uh, balance in terms of like what 
कैन बी द वर्क इन प्रोग्रेस फॉर द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो अपार्ट फ्रॉम द एज क्रम ऑटोमेशन ऑफ सी आई सी डी टेस्टिंग एवरीथिंग विल एनेबल दिस एंटरप्राइज एजिलिटी सो द अदर्स पर्सपेक्टिव फ्रॉम द सेफ वॉट दे से डेवॉप्स इज डेवॉप्स इज मोर of an engineering function which you can see here which is like once there is a release software development team uh, basically like uh, they complete their scrum and they put up their code and everything how can they take it for the either for the testing or, or the system demo so that's what is more of the devops for them or how they have defined it but at the end of the day even if safe what they say is it's more of an enterprise agility so have your releases in such a way that uh, you should be ready to do the release at every sprint okay whether you are ready or not is what uh, is what you need to identify so the operational aspect is uh, uh, i'm not sure how many guys you know that uh, there is a book called the phoenix uh, project it has been written by jean kim who is probably one of the leading guys in terms of like uh, uh, getting this uh, devops or streamlining this devops so he actually talks it's more of an operational issues which have to be streamlined in the organizations so the operation issues can be various things you can see that uh, uh, it could be from wastage delay quality Uh, management and control or uh, work and cultural issues so you everyone has to see the big picture and uh, uh, like uh, what is the complete uh, value stream and in this value stream what is the bottleneck and how can one take out this bottleneck such that the value stream is much more smoother and the maximum way such that the throughput is higher so our understanding of devops it's not only between the software development team and the it organization which actually deploys this it's much more than that okay though the integration communication and collaboration is the common words in the devops world but it is more of a it's for the complete organization right from your business users till it gets delivered to the customer so whoever is involved devops is nothing but like ensuring that all these people whoever is involved are on same page with minimal effort of like updating each other and it's more of a convergence of people process and tools such that you contribute to the business agility so what are the pillars of devops so uh, most of us know that culture technology or process is more of like a organization pillars and they go hand in hand so we tried taking this integration collaboration and communication and how does they fit into this culture technology and process so for integration if you see like in cultural it's more of an one team and one goal and uh, yeah you have to do collective decision making and you have to empower a team should be self empowered so you need to have right tools uh, in place uh, uh, to take it's more of a metrics driven priority rather than individual or managers who come and say okay do this task for tomorrow okay so you need a right integrated environment and which is like uh, which can we will go through that in deep uh, okay especially on this technology slide and process is more of a you need a way of having a cross functional process and workflows i, I we, when we do consulting uh, we see more often this is one of the biggest problem area like uh, there will be product owners and there will be product managers and there will be engineers uh, who will be developers and uh, testers so there are a lot of people involved in order to get a feature or a story out so what is needed and uh, what is delivered because there are so, so many people the effective way of controlling this is like okay you need to have a cross functional workflow but 
right now we see this is one of the biggest gap in the industry as of now and how to achieve that in the collaboration aspect like how can you have a platform such that every person feels that their perspective is being captured and can you collaborate as early as possible right the moment a product manager or the product owner thinking that a feature has to be delivered how fast they can get from the engineering team that how much big it is they are thinking of or technically whether it is feasible or not or whatever it is such that they can actually minimize their efforts asap rather than taking it very late and in the game you realize that okay there is a problem and there are technology implications and you cannot actually move forward and in the technology space like how good your tools are which will make you that your artifacts whatever it could be code or document or binaries or whatever the other whether you have a collaborated platform or not and how to get that kind of platform and in the process it's more of like okay review and approval process whether that is part of your system or not and in the communication it's more of uh, okay how we segregate differentiate between collaboration and communication is uh, within the function whatever you do if two guys are working together and coming up with something okay it's more of a collaborated thing and if one individual is communicating another individual or like okay something such that they can plan their things accordingly like engineering communicating to product management that there is a technological limitation we will not be able to deliver this feature so what impact does it have in the sales and marketing or in the pricing so how good you can actually adapt this uh, to the limitation whatever you heard from engineering so how fast you can actually do that so in the technology space how good is your system which is centralized and automatic notifications based on the whatever the work or the limitations you communicate so that everyone is on the same page and in the process it's more of like uh, okay defining the measurement uh, like based on the progress like it is only possible like once you have a cross functional workflow like you have 100 stories and now which story is where so you need to have the right process in place to identify that uh, how much progress you made as an organization for delivering these 100 stories uh would that can we launch a small poll before we move to the next section sure sure uh guys i have launched a uh, question on the screen uh it's to answer this quickly please good so we are quick i'm ending this poll uh, just in next second yes so here is the result 52% people are uh, business analyst or project leader 38% are project managers currently in this webinar yeah we can uh, move to the next uh, question now okay so now i'll be uh, covering in terms of like a uh, uh what is the devops technology is what we think basically there are a lot of guys talking about uh, devops technology everybody like me they are talking in their perspective people should understand that okay whatever people are talking now in terms of industry is more of like uh, okay it's their individual perspectives is what they are putting in i'll start with uh, configuration management okay uh, like uh, once when we do the projects or releases okay at the end of the day the configuration management is more about uh, capturing these artifacts okay such that you will be able to replicate in the event unexpected event uh, like uh, it could be a system crash so how fast you can actually retrieve from the system crash whatever it is so you should be able to identify these artifacts uh, they should be able to store them and uniquely identify them but the one thing is like uh, yeah you will have new releases or new products so at the end of the day like uh, the change is constant and artifacts will be keep changing so how can you keep this change under control 
and uh, you will be able to figure out these uh, changes like what has been changed from project 1 to project 3 especially on this feature so how easy it is for the organizations to identify that so the main artifacts management classification you can see it's more of like a source code management repository management and documentation management we I, we have captured some of the tools which basically are into these knowledge areas so there is a problem with the configuration management probably it's like uh, uh, in early 80s or 90s uh, the configuration ma management started evolving so the problem what we identified is it's more of an IT operations focused and traceability right from your requirement to the delivery is very very tedious and visibility is was not there it's more of an individuals who have to make special effort in order to get this visibility and collaboration and communication platform is not at all integrated like I have been using the clear case I'm not sure how many guys have used it but we use it to like a check in check out code and lot of operations merging branching whatever we use it to perform but we never had an opportunity to collaborate directly on top of the tool okay why I had to branch out why I'm checking in what change I made in this tool most of the things are discussed outside those tools and which are probably the reasons why whatever we are doing the triggers that is outside the tool and could never be captured on the clear case so we had to make a, like only it from a platform like while doing a check you can make a comment but before you do check in there are a lot of collaboration you do with the other engineers you have no way to capture that so that's where the trigger of ALM application lifecycle management has started so it is more of a supervision of your software application which is from the complete initiation till its retirement and uh, you should be able to document and track what has happened on this complete application or the product so it um, covers the complete SDLC so what is ALM so you can see this picture there are various knowledge areas like requirement management uh, developer IDE and uh, or the developer platform the source code management build management deployment management test management and service management so and project management or the release management tool so there are different people who are performing the actions in a certain knowledge area and there is a handshake between the one actor to the another actor or one knowledge area to another knowledge area and so what are all the vendors who are, who are all the vendors uh, and what are all the tools uh, in this area is what we capture as we are Atlassian partners so uh, you can see the Jira confluence and how does they fit into this LM space uh, is this so you see that uh, okay for requirement management there is confluence uh, uh, id connectors are there is cache is there crucible clover bamboo uh, there is a plugin called jepire for test management uh, jira is one of the popular tools uh, uh, and jira service desk is another tool which is getting released in the last uh, like 2 3 years we will take let's take one step uh, backwards uh, in terms of like SDLC and how, how does this uh, ALM tools or how does they fit into is what we will go through that so if you see various phases I, I think everyone knows what are these phases but the crux is how fast you can get the feedback so it's all about getting the feedback ASAP is what is it is so in continuous integration it's more of like uh, you can see development machine control system and build and unit test uh, which is uh, the main three contributors to this continuous integration and uh, before CA what used to happen is like uh, there are independent developers uh, they will be working uh, uh, in their own space do, do, do the collaboration and everything 
uh, one day they realize okay this is the check out or check in freeze date so at that date uh, probably it's a, a two week window or four week window or six week window whatever it is they use it to do a big bang merge and uh, it used to go for a toss and there will be a lot of integration issues and that's where the need of this continuous integration is much more evident in nowadays world okay and it like there are lot of infrequent releases testing happens much later in the game like in the typical waterfall model once you design develop then the test starts so the feedback mechanism is very late and how can you make sure that the feedback is much faster is by keeping the continuous integration so it's like uh, developers have to do the regular commits and all the branching strategy or the merging strategy has to be in place uh, and it has to be clearly communicated with the release management or the product management teams to the development or the testing team such that everyone knows what is going on and uh, the moment uh, developer checks in and there should be automated builds uh, and uh, static code analysis tools and code quality metrics tools should be triggered off such that you get the feedback asap and uh, this continuous integration tool should be able to delegate or hand over the build available to the continuous deployment servers uh, such that uh, it enables the feedback much as fast as possible the rules of ca it's one of the uh, other thing in like uh, uh, which is complex and uh, mostly overlooked uh, most of the guys uh, or the companies actually concentrate more in terms of like uh, application level or the last level but in turn the complete product product is dependent on much more things like uh, it depends on the hardware os and database application server and uh, rest all other factors different devices so one fix whatever you are doing is not only or may not be limited to only that one software release there might be a need for the retrofitting and how can you take across from one product line to another product line as fast as possible so you need to have a right platform in order to get this such that there should be automated triggers in place that uh, okay uh, like product line 1 or uh, there is a software fix uh, getting released and uh, okay this release auto, or whatever the developer uh, fix is applicable for the other product lines as well so that should be able to come out of from your tools whatever is in place whatever all the tools uh, ca tools available in market so you see a lot of open source tools and uh, pay tools uh, jenkins is one of the popular tool and rest all the tools uh, and uh, from atlassian the tool is uh, bamboo so what are all the factors uh, in terms of like choosing your ca tools uh, we have done some segregation you can see this sure can i launch a small poll just for 5 seconds sure yeah so guys uh, just request you to answer one question here cool so i'm ending this question in just next 2 seconds here it goes all right oh there you can continue hello okay so yeah, what is more? continuous deployment is more of like once the build is ready or your software is ready so how can you take the software such that the testing team whether it could be integrated manual testing or the automation testing uh, they should be able to do this testing and provide the feedback asap so okay what is your life cycle you see that uh, there are a uh, uh, lot of like getting the machine installing the database uh, app and server and deploying the application uh, what used to be done earlier and what are all the current options you have such so that you can actually make this a complete uh, uh, system as that complete deployment as automation like okay then you see these tools uh, 
uh, in infrastructure provisioning and infrastructure automation and configuration autom uh, automation, configuration management automation. So different tools uh, and uh, how can you or what are all the factors you need to be choosing in order to uh, like uh, you need to go through in order to select a tool. Then to consolidate, so what is this DevOps engineering tools? It's more of CA and CD uh, tool which actually does the orchestration among all these variety of tools, version control system, build or code analysis, repository and uh, whatever the deployment factors. Uh. So continuous quality is more about uh, like uh, how fast you can get the feedback by, by doing the testing. So now what is this ALM to do with this DevOps as a platform? Okay, so you know that this is more of a section for continuous development uh, where the agile methodologies uh, started playing a lot of role and uh, then this is nothing but your continuous integration platform and uh, yeah this is nothing but your continuous deployment platform and you can see basically the integration points between all these tools and these tools are or these knowledge areas are for continuous testing. So integrated ALM is nothing but your DevOps platform which will look like this. Uh, the dotted lines more represent uh, uh, the integration aspects. Uh, so you see that uh, the project tracking or the release management tool is the crux which will be an orchestrator for your uh, complete visibility and traceability. Uh, which will become eventually the continuous delivery platform with security logging and monitoring. So as a DevOps technology, like I told you now, like what we do in this space uh, by this time, I think you guys must be clear like in the ALM and this uh, automation aspects, uh, we do actually end to end uh, uh, business consulting and uh, implementation of this, uh, okay, how to implement these tools in your organizations. So in the interest of time, probably like, uh, uh, should I uh, continue for next uh, like three, four minutes on how to adopt DevOps? Uh, can you see questions from the audience on the screen? Uh, do you see the questions raised by audience? Would you like to take some questions as well? Uh, so I read a question from Pradeep Ghosh. He says uh, DevOps is also talking about collaboration, etc. Same as Agile. And why there is a need of DevOps? Okay, no problem. So the need of DevOps, Agile is uh, more limited for the software development team. Okay, but actually there are, uh, so uh, the software development team is more of uh, uh, this space where the continuous development. So developer stops more or less his work once the source code has been checked in. And he will start again working only once he knows that his code is not working on the system. So the collaboration is, you cannot limit the collaboration only to the development team. It has to be completely cross-functional and it has to be across your organization, not only with your build management or the deployment management teams, but it has to be across your organization, starting from your product management until your service management, such that the complete organization is on same pace. Unless you collaborate, there will be a lot of differences in this area. So does that answer this question or do you guys want me to give one more example around this? I think that's very much answered the question and uh, in interest of time we can keep it short. Uh, one more question we would like to take from uh, Sneha Ratnala. He says how can manual testing enable uh, fastness in DevOps? Manual testing will not be like a, a, a will not directly enable the fastness in DevOps uh, unless uh, your automation is in place where every week or every day you have release and the manual testers know exactly in terms of like uh, what kind of scope has been released from yesterday to today's release and what kind of testing they need to perform. It could be one day or it could be one week whatever works for the organization depending upon the regression testing and how costly the testing can be. But how can it enable is the only way you need to have a right platform to know what kind of scope has been released from the last version to this version 
such that the testing team can define what kind of testing or test cases that they need to execute. And if you do without a right platform, it will be a nightmare in terms of so you'll be continuously being in the meetings only to understand what has been done. So you need the crux is having the right platform according to me. Okay, one more question we would like to take before we move on. Uh, the question is from Vesali. She says, is there a need to have a change in the team setup considering DevOps adoption? Okay, it's more of a, uh, I, I, personally I don't feel that there has to be change and I feel that, uh, yeah, having a right technology in place uh, will automatically change people's mindset. Uh, I'll give you an example in my personal life. Uh, uh, two years back, uh, I used to struggle to book a cab. And there used to be like I used to make a lot of calls or coordinate with someone in booking the cab and getting the cab and all these things. Now there is a technology improvement. We see apps like Ola or Uber. So now no one actually changed my mind. It's the convenience what they provided automatically actually triggered a change in me. So organizations have to provide that kind of technology platform for these employees uh, such that they automatically feel and they move accordingly whatever the changes happened so okay. does that answer your yeah, question yeah, this, this very much answered my question uh, this last question that I have to read and then you can give your closing remarks and I would require one minutes before uh, we can close so the question is from Sangram is there an integrated shoot that hosts all CIE plus CD tools or capabilities under one roof there is no one-stop solution or a simple like integrated suit. Organizations have to build this suit on their own. Like, yeah, we have done a lot of solutions around this, which is a complete integrated platform. Uh, you can see all these tools. Uh, uh, how can they get integrated such that uh, it's a lot more easy and transparent. Okay, so it has an integration right from your confluence uh, uh, till your test management or the service design, uh, we did not do service design integration but till test management from starting from here till here all these tools are integrated so guys uh, thanks very much for attending everyone of you will be eligible for one SCU scrum education unit uh, thanks thanks Uday. thanks everyone bye bye